Amen? Amen. A book that seems maybe, you know, we just pass through and we read our Bibles. But right now, we understood that it is so rich in lessons. The, the vastness of the problems of the Corinth Church help us in our generation. So we can study and deal with these problems. And so we can escape from having these problems, you know, the problems of... Uh, it's good when you learn from others' mistakes. Yes, we learn from our mistakes, but it's better when you, you that, that you will not commit mistakes. When you commit mistakes, then you learn it, then you will, you won't do it. Okay? So the Corinth Church, they committed many mistakes. Praise the Lord. We are here right now. God has given us the Book of First Corinthians for us to do what is right. Amen. Amen. And uh, maybe you are looking at this right now. This is our theme. To preach the gospel in the regions beyond you. Okay? That means uh, in from the Philippines, let us reach the world. But in reaching the world, that's what the Bible says, let us take the opportunity of the of, of the Southeast Asian nations. The fare is affordable. The countries are close with our countries. We have ties with them. And so, because we are friends with the Southeast Asian nations, it is an opportunity for us to reach the souls and share to them Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. It's good to reach the African soils, but you would be needing half a million to reach some of the places there. Okay? And so, it's good that, this, that we have an opportunity to reach these countries and tell them about God. And so, once they learn about God, God can use them, their resources, their talents, and anything, so that also with us, they can reach the world. And because we know in the Bible that when the gospel would return back to Jerusalem, Christ will return. Amen? When the gospel reached Jerusalem again, as a nation, as Israel as a nation, then Christ will return again. Okay? And uh, praise the Lord if He comes back soon. Amen? I wish I dream. Do you dream of that? That during your lifetime, Jesus would go back. Okay? I dream also. But His will be done. Amen? We really don't know. Nobody knows when the Lord will return. Some of you do not want yet. Because you want to be married first to the love of your life. Uh -huh. Some of you do not want yet because you're reaching a goal in life. But uh, all in all, it is worth it all when we see Christ. Amen? So, ready? Let's open our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Verse number 17. Are you ready? So, Paul, after sharing to them some uh, advices on 1 Corinthians chapter number uh, number uh, 10 and 11, uh, on, the, on the last part of chapter 11, there is another problem that, that, that Paul heard from, uh, siguro, maybe uh, the Chloe's family you know, are in, on hot seat when they give up. Kasi sila yung nagsubong eh. They were the ones who told Paul, there is a family in the Bible who, who went to Paul and told them about the problems of the foreign church. So what do you think? When they went back to Corinth, <laughs> we don't know. But it was Chloe's report in his house, his family, that told Paul, or maybe they will not go back there, that's why they told everything to Paul. But one thing is sure, Paul knew the problem of the Corinth church. Okay? And so let us read these verses. Verse number 17. Now in this, are you there? 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number uh, 17. Now in this, let, let us read. Now in this that I declare to you, I praise you not, but f and that ye come together not for the better, but for the worse. So, Paul was telling them, we are gathering for, for our welfare, we are gathering to, to be better, we are gathering to grow, but you, you don't gather for growth. He said, you're, you're gathering is ruining your fellowship. Your gathering is ruining your Christian life. Your gathering is not for the better, but for the worse. Verse number 18. For first of all, are you there? For first of all, when you come together in the church, 
I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. Yung una, that that's what we have studied last time. Okay? That's what we've studied last time. Verse 19. For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. Sabi niya, eh, siguro dahil na, uh, sometimes the Lord allows it to happen that heresies will come, and so the, the, the true, the people of God that are faithful, they would be known. Okay? Verse 20. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. So, he said, uh, uh, the, the, we're, we're talking about the communion. We're talking about the, the, the bread and the wine. We're talking about the Lord's Supper. And the bread and then the wine. Lord's Supper. Yeah, we do that, right? The communion. We call it communion. Later we will study that. Now, Paul was telling them, you don't gather to eat it. You don't gather to fill your stomach. Just, I remember when I was Bible college, we have a classmate. We have a classmate who, who told us, he, he, he said to my teacher, Teacher, why don't we change the bread to hamburger? And the, and the wine to soft drinks? And so we can be filled. Of course, not knowing First Corinthians chapter 11, but if you would go there, that's the problem. Paul said, you don't, you don't take the Lord's Supper to fill your bellies. You have houses to eat, he said. We, 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 don't, we don't celebrate the Lord's table. We don't celebrate the Lord's Supper to fill our stomach. Okay? Uh, Are you with me? Okay. Verse number uh, 21. For in eating, everyone take it before another. So because when they come there, the hungry people eat first. They don't wait for others. Have you experienced that? You're so hungry. And then you're waiting for the person and he's still doing something. Okay? Sometimes in the house, that's what we, we do. My wife and me. My wife will prepare, but, but uh, after that, our baby will cry. And, and you're so hungry, you want to eat, but you have to wait for her. So sometimes I don't wait, I eat. <laughs> okay? Sometimes I eat and then, ma, ma, la, ma, mahal, uh, mauna na ako. Kasi gutom na gutom ka na. Sometimes it happens, right? Hello? But, but, but that should not be the Lord's Supper. In the Lord's Supper, that's, where, that, that's where, that, what they are doing. They were doing. And one is hungry and another is drunken. Nakainom na. Hindi mo yan lasing, ha? We don't drink uh, fermented wine in Lord's Supper, okay? But verse number 22, what? Have we not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you. That the Lord, are you there? Verse 23. Let us read together. That the Lord. Ready? Read. In which he was betrayed to bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Do not forget those last words. It's important. This is my body. This do in what? In remembrance of me. When the Lord speaks of this is my body, He speaks of a figure of speech. It was not literal. The Jewish people even thought that it was literal. How can we eat His flesh and drink His blood? Are you with me now? The bread do not become the body of Christ. Later we will study. It is a remembrance of Him. As you eat the bread, you remember what He has done. Are you with me, folks? Hello? So, verse number 25. And the same manner also he took the cup when he had sucked, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Verse 26. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death until he come. Every time the church would would organize a Lord's Supper, 
it was not the day that the, the, the frequency was not given on how many months or weeks do we prepare them. But as often as we do that, the Bible tells us uh, we do it to show the Lord's death. It reminds us that God died for us. That God became a man and died at the cross of Calvary to save you and me. Are you with me? That's what we. Uh, that's what I shared last time uh, with the theme of Bataan, grace. What does it mean by grace? What is grace? Did we? Are we saved by grace? Amen. Are we saved by grace? Amen. Grace is a gift, right? Amen. Grace is free. Nobody works to be to have grace. Are you with me? Uh, you don't pay. To have grace. Grace is free. But grace is not cheap. Do you get it? Grace might be free. But grace is not cheap. I tell you guys about those para medyo stress yun ako. Yan. Kunin natin. Nakakita ko nga dyan, ah. Binili ko ito para kayo yung stress siya. Ano ba ako na? Oh, you see? This is grace. It might not be too expensive, but it's an example. Okay? This is... New shoes. New shoes. I will give it to Preacher Joel because we will give it to him. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Sobat mo, sobat mo, sobat mo, sobat mo. Sana, sana hindi mo siya, para hindi mo siya na yung instruction natin. Sobat mo lang. Ayan, regalo po ng church yan kay Preacher Joel kasi nag-birthday po siya na nakaraan. Okay? So, wala mo akong kasa. Subok, subok. Kasa, kasa. Oh, it fits, right? Ayan, ayos ko. This is the illustration. He received it. It was so easy. I did not say, Joel, sing before you get the shoes. Preacher Joel, you preach before you get the shoes. Preacher Joel, do this and do that before you get the shoes. No, we just gave it, right? It was free. It was free. And he now he 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 wears it. He he enjoys it. He would enjoy it. I hope it will not uh, be uh, down with, uh, with light materials. But one thing is sure, that is a picture of grace. But was that cheap? Is that cheap? No. It has a price. It has. He might got it for free, but but it it has a price. Do you get the point, folks? Basically, God has given us grace. It's free. You don't have to work to be saved. You don't have to pay to be saved. You don't have to try hard to be saved. You don't have to, 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 to recommit your life to be saved. You don't go up to the mountain and, 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 and try hard to go to heaven and be saved. No. Salvation is free. Pay the, the death on the cross to, to, to save a sinner like you and me. I got saved when I accepted Christ. It's free. That grace is free, but it was never cheap. I might, I might have this forever. I'm saved forever. Amen. Nobody takes away my salvation now. For every visitor or a person who first heard this, I want you to know. Gusto ko namin malaman niyo. Nang kalintasan hindi binabayaran. Ang tao ko makasalanan. All of us are sinners, right? And God is a holy God. I'll give you an illustration. But Elijah, come with me. You see? If I'm God, I'm holy. I'm not God. An illustration again. Ako'y banal. Now this sinful man cannot go with me. He cannot. Sin separates man from God. Are you with me? Kahit may religion siya, even though he has a religion, even though he pays, no matter what he does, he cannot come to me because he is a sinner. You see? But God loves man. 
God loves it. The Bible tells us, for God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. God became a man and died on the cross for this sinful man. You see, He cannot pay, I pay. He, even though He suffers, He cannot be saved. But by grace are you saved through faith. At kung ang tao tatanggapin si Cristo bilang kanyang tagapagligtas, the Bible tells us, God and man can be reconciled together. Amen? That's grace. Thank you. Ano yun? Amen. Paano mo may sapatos din? That's grace. You see? Ladies and gentlemen, brethren, it might be free, but it's not cheap. You take care of that grace. You enjoy that grace. You, I hope you are thankful of that grace. Amen? So, every time we take the Lord's Supper, we show that to other people. It's all by grace. No matter whatever a church would reach, no matter whatever a church, any job that could be well done, no matter how much money you would have, every time we take the Lord's Supper, it reminds us, it's all my grace. Had it not been for the grace of Almighty God, we're going to hell. If He did not come and die for me, I will suffer for eternity. I have nothing without God. I am nothing without God. That's the purpose of the Lord's Supper. Paul was telling them, that's the reason. You show the Lord's death until He comes. You will always remind yourself that any church... Are you with me? Because when we obey the Lord, God can prosper. God can give abundance. Of course, not all the time, there are people who are called for martyrdom. There are, there are God's people who died cruel death and yet they were rewarded. The Bible tells us they have better resurrection. But again, we are living in a world where God can bless and prosper and, 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 and promote. Are you with me now? Yeah. And the Lord's Supper would remind every member of the church, nothing to boast of. Nothing to be proud of yourself. It is by His death on the cross. Somebody has given you grace. And that is Jesus Christ. Amen? So, ladies and gentlemen, that's what the, Paul, the Apostle Paul was telling. That's the reason for the Lord's Supper. Not to eat. You know, sometimes we take that away. We take that away. You see? That's not the reason for that. The reason is not for food, feeding our bodies with food. The reason is not for food, feeding our bodies with food. It is to remember of the grace of Almighty God. Verse number 27. Wherefore, whosoever, are you there? Verse 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. Not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep. It is because of their attitude towards the death of Christ that God is punishing them. Are you with me? Of course, it's not just the act, ladies and gentlemen. We would read the context of Paul. It's really their attitude towards the Lord's body. You don't take Christ's death too lightly. That's the thing that saved your soul forever. Huwag niyong maliitin ang katawan ni Kristo. Huwag niyong maliitin ang Panginoon. You don't treat God as something less important. Always remember that this Lord's Supper would remind you that there is nothing that can be more important than God. It tells everybody that hey, God is the greatest thing that ha ever happened to you. That means what He did on the cross. So, so you treat Him right. You don't belittle it. You, 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 you give reverence to the Lord and His death. 
on the cross of Calvary. Verse number 31. For we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Kung tayo na, if you would decide to look at yourself and change, then it, it doesn't need to God, for God to, to, to judge you. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. You see? Praise God for spanking. God spanks His children. God never takes away salvation. Are you with me now? But that is not a license to sin. Even though your salvation is eternal, it's not a license to sin. You have a Father in Heaven that can chastise His beloved. Amen? He will spank or chastise His people. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Okay? So, that's our lesson for this Sunday school. Now, it's a short lesson, but uh, to give a uh, to give much time later with our topic. So, we Christians or Baptists often refer to this ordinance as the Lord's Supper. Communion is also a biblical word. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16. Are you there? Let us read. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? You see? So, we call it also communion. But has come to mean, uh, uh, sabi dito, communion is also a biblical word, but in other groups, in other religion, it changed the meaning. Are you with me? That's why we do not use the terms Eucharist, Mass, or Sacrament. We don't use that word. Because once they say, in, in the Catholic religion, uh, uh, for a while, it's, uh, it's not to offend anybody. In the Catholic Church, they call it a sacrament. It is a way to be saved. It is a way to be saved. If you want to go to heaven, you have to do Lord's Supper or the Lord's Communion. Are you with me? Sino sa na communion ng bata? We had that right, di ba? Na communion tayo. So, yung communion na yan, Tinuturo po sa atin yan para daw tayo maligtas. Okay? Nag-guess you po ako? Now, think about it. Think about it. Think, 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 think. Para maligtas to be saved. What is the meaning of the word save? Say. <laughs> Pag-ibad na yun si Ryan. Kung papastor yan, kaya kanya niya. Are you with me? What is the word save? Maligtas. O oh, si RJ, halimbawa, ayan si RJ. Si RJ, halimbawa, nalululod. What if RJ is drowning? He's drowning in the sea, in the middle of the ocean. You see? And he doesn't know how to swim. He doesn't know how to swim. I don't know either. So if RJ and I would go and he's drowning, bye RJ. Because I will kill myself. I don't know how to swim. Sino marunong lumangoy? Sino marunong lumangoy? Ayun, Sister Jan. Sister Jan, eh, kung si Arcade ba malulunod, sasagip ba? If he will drown, would you, would you save him? Tutulungan mo? You see? Oh. Kasi kung ayaw din, ayaw ko dyan, I don't like. Eh di, patay pa rin siya. You see? So, ang kaligtasan po, tingnan niyo po, salvation is this. Somebody is in danger, he cannot save himself. He cannot do anything to help himself. He needs a savior. And the savior is Sister Jan, eh. He knows how to save. She's willing to save. And so she would come and save this person. So listen. If Jesus is the Savior, kung si Cristo po ang magliligtas, at ikaw ang napapamang, if Jesus is the Savior and you are the sinful man, there is nothing that you can do to save yourself. Communion is not a way to go to heaven. Are you with me? Baptism is not a way to go to heaven. You cannot do anything to forgive your own sin. So Jesus died on the cross. Kaya ako namatay si Cristo. 
para magligtas. Ang kaligtasan libre, salvation is free. You see? It is not by work. So, we don't call it communion, uh, we don't call it sacrament. We call it Lord's Supper or communion. Okay? So, what is the true purpose of the Lord's Supper? Ito po yung pinagpag-aaralan natin uh, with our short message this morning. What is it? Because on our World Missions Conference, at the end, we will have our Lord's Supper. Okay? We will have our Lord's Supper at the end of the conference because our mission work will come here with us and we will have our communion. Okay? So, the true purpose of the Lord's Supper. What can we learn from the topic? What can we learn from the topic that we have read? Letter A, it is a memorial or a remembrance of what Christ did on Calvary. Amen? As humans, we tend to forget. Are you with me? Sometimes, yeah. That's what I told you. If, if Brother Elijah will be rich and Epoy will be rich or poor, maybe someday. Pag, pero kung magtatapat itong dalawang to at susunod sa pastor nila, magpapalain ito ng Panginoon. So, if they will do with grace, and all of us with grace, and we will, we will have comfort. You see? But, because we are humans, we might forget. Sometimes when people are in convenience, we forget that it is only by grace that we are saved. Are you with me? So, ladies and gentlemen, that's what can happen. Anybody can be successful. Anybody can be rich. But the Lord's Supper, his, its purpose? To remind you. To remind you. Even if Jerlan would be the president of the Philippines, every time he comes to church and partake of the Lord's Supper, it would remind him. It's only by grace. Are you with me? We might be in a bigger building someday. Or a smaller one, I do not know. But the Lord's Supper would remind us the most important part of our Christian life. Jesus died for me. Reminds me of that. Amen? It should remind the church. It is a remembrance. It's a memorial. Amen? It is also a picture. Let it be. It is not just a memorial. But a picture. First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty-six. Ready go. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. It's a picture. It's not just a ritual. It's a picture of his broken body and his shed blood. Amen. Every time we divide the bread. You would realize, Lord, it's free, but it's not cheap. It is precious. My salvation is precious. Somebody paid the price. And it's a cruel price. You see? Naduro kang Panginoon sa atin. He was broken that we might be whole. Are you with me? His blood was shed that we might have the eternal life. It is a picture that would remind you. Have you seen pictures? Hello? Sa isang larawang kupas? Nakakita na kayo ng mga larawang kupas? Every time you see pictures, it would remind you of something. Lord's Supper is a picture that would remind us of something. Amen? Third, it is a celebration. It is a celebration. A time of thanks for the love of God shown at the cross of Calvary. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. Commendeth His love toward us. In that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died. Again, as human beings. So, just like relationship, I'll show you an illustration. This is one true thing about relationship. Yes. Listen. Is Bob just beautiful? Hello? So listen to this. 
it's not a license. Even though my wife is beautiful, it's not, it doesn't mean that every day you, you like each other. Tama po ba sa mga may mga asawa dito? Lagi ba na lang na, parang chit 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 chit, lagi ba kayo nagkagano na? Hindi naman mo, di ba? Sometimes, you don't like her, she doesn't like me. Am I right? Hello? Are you with me? That's reality. Why? Because of this kind of flesh. Are you with me now? But when I sometimes, thank you. But I love my wife. Amen? But sometimes when you look at pictures, oh, you would remember the sweet days. You would, especially when you get older. Are you with me? When you get older, are you with me? Sometimes you don't appreciate your treasure. My wife is a treasure to cherish. Your husband is a treasure to cherish. Your family is a treasure to cherish. But sometimes when you're too busy, you forget it. And we, and we, and we neglect them and we take them for granted and, and give much more time to other things. Are you with me? But when, when, but, but when you reminded of such pictures, but you were together, oh, we were in this place, we were in Yatra, we were in, uh, we were in uh, uh, Palenque. I remember one time we, I and Mom Jess went to Jeepney on our, I think it was our anniversary also. We ride the Jeepney together and then, uh, pa kami sa harap. Are you with me now? Hello? And it would refresh. It refreshes you of the memories and the importance of it. You get my point? Every time we have lords, because that's it. Even though we're Christians, there are times that we don't act like one. Hello? Even though we are God's children, sometimes we don't treat God as much as He should be treated. We treat Him a little lower. Sometimes we don't give much time to Him. We don't, we don't prioritize Him. Every time there is temptation, instead of obeying God, we yield to temptation. And, and it's a blessing, folks. Listen, children of God. There is something that would remind us, merong magpapaalala sa atin ang importansya niya. That's the purpose of the Lord's Supper. It is a time to celebrate once again. Lord, thank you. Ligtas kami. Praise God. And, and sometimes you will be sorrowful even. Because of the problems of your life, because of certain things that is happening to you, you might feel disappointed, you might feel lonely, you might be in that yourself. But when the Lord's Supper comes, you will be reminded you are special to God. Amen. And God should be special to you. You see? It is a celebration of what He has done and what we, we did have when we got saved. Amen? Letter D. It's not just a celebration. Letter D. It is an anticipation. Anticipation of His coming again. Not just remembering your past, but looking forward for His promise. I tell you. Living in this life full of bills and dreams and other things and stuff, it would take away that truth in you. You won't think of the rapture. Sometimes you would be focused on thinking about your problem. Sometimes you're too serious thinking about your studies or your crush or your love life, whatsoever. Or problems maybe or disaster. But the reality is you're dying. And you will face God. And as what the song says, only one life soon it will pass. Uh, Only what's done for Christ will last. Again, the Bible does not teach you not to work. The Bible teaches us to work. If you don't work, you don't eat. Are you with me now? The Bible is not discouraging you to study. The Bible is not even prohibiting you to have a love life. Amen. Are you with me? Uh, Hello? But, do not forget that no matter how busy you are, no matter how many things you're doing, you will die one day and you will face God. Or He will return one day and you will face God. All in all, eternity is waiting upon us. Then, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. That's what the Bible says. Are you with me now? That means, 
take time to say, oh, oh, hindi lang para sa trabaho ang buhay. Hindi lang para sa pag-aaral ang buhay. Hindi lang para sa love life ang buhay. Ako'y ligtas, ako'y haharap sa Panginoon. I will soon meet God. What am I doing in my life? Lord's, the Lord's Supper will have, your, have you anticipating His return. He's coming back. Ano na kayo nakakatakot kayo mamatay? Uh, two days ago. Two days ago. Last Friday. Last Friday. A comrade died again. A pastor that has been suffering from dialysis for the rest of his last five years. Oh no. Ten years I think. He's been suffering that for many years already. But until his last breath, he was preaching the word of God. Are you with me? He died under, uh, during his dialysis. He, he had a uh, heart attack. He died. So, every time we think of death, are you happy? <laughs> of course, this flesh is a prey. Are you with me? But I tell you, once we remember God, we remember our salvation, I tell you, death has been overcome by victory. Amen? Death has no sting anymore. Everybody closes their eyes. Everybody dies. That's a reality. Oh, no matter how lonely death could be, folks, listen to this. Joy will surely come back. Come when you open your eyes. Why? Because heaven is real. Amen? Amen. And another hope is there can also happen a time when death will never come and Christ will come first before death. Uh, Amen? That's rapture. Now, which of which one thing is sure. We will meet the Lord. Amen? And so, the Lord's Supper will give you that anticipation. It takes away fear. It takes away doubt. It, 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 it changes everything with joy and assurance and, and, and confidence. That if you're a child of God, kung tinanggap mo na si Jesus sa puso mo bilang tagapagligtas, kung nanampalataya ka sa Kanya bilang bilang tagapagligtas, you don't have to be afraid if you have Jesus in your life. Amen? Amen? Because you are saved. Amen? Hello? So, letter E, as what I've been telling this, it is not a means of being saved. Lord's Supper is not a way to be saved. Okay? It is the picture of our salvation. Okay? So, the right content, before we end, the right content of the Lord's Supper, unleavened bread. Are you with me now? Unleavened bread. To picture His broken body. We don't use sky flakes. <laughs> Why? Because we are picturing the Lord's body. You see? Leaven is a picture of sin. Yung yeast, yeast. The baking powder. We don't put that in the bread. Why? Because it is a picture of sin in the Bible. That's why we use unleavened bread. We know that the bread should be unleavened because this meal was in conjunction with the Jewish Passover. Okay? It is conjunction with the Jewish Passover. It was often called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Leaven is another word for yeast. And it is a picture of sin. Are you with me? Christ is a sinless man. The impeccable Savior. Sinless Savior. That means when you picture Him, you picture Him with something that pictures sinlessness. He's the bread of life. Amen? And so we use unleavened bread. That's why somebody bakes a cake that has no baking powder or yeast or uh, emulsifying agent, if I'm not mistaken. Ano ang tawag dyan sa, sa a baking term na yan. But, we do it purely with flour and water and salt. Okay? Are you still with me? And then the drink. The drink is unfermented wine. We don't use Coke Zero as much as I love to. We don't use Coke for Lord's Supper. Okay? It is, should be from, this, from the fruit of the vine that is crushed as a picture of Christ. 
and it is the juice of the grapes. Okay? So we crush grapes, we buy pure grape juice, we don't buy uh, tang or or uh, uh, or anything. I know there are so many delicious drinks. Coffee is good. Tea is good. But it is not for Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper's drink should be the fruit of the vine. As mentioned, alam niyo ba, ang nagpapalasin sa alak, yung, yung sabaw ng ubas, kung bakit nagiging red wine yan? Yeast. Leaven. That's why we don't use that. We don't use unfermented grapes. Pastor, di ba maganda naman sa puso? Mas maganda ang jogging sa puso. Tsaka pure grape juice. Okay? Huwag na yan. Kasi nakakalasin yan. Maganda nga, pero malalasin ka naman pag nasobra ka. Maaadi ka pa. Sabi na nga po, Panginoon, do not look at wine when it is red. Nanunokso yan eh. Masarap kasi yan. Malitan mo na lang ng red pure grape juice. Okay? Mas mura pa. Okay? So, the biblical, the biblical uh, drink that is mentioned is unfermented wine. Of grape juice. It is also called the fruit of the vine, indicating its freshness and purity. We believe that the bread and wine simply remain bread and wine and do not change into anything else. From the time that it was started in Luke and it was commemorated in 1 Corinthians 11, it is still the same. Are you with me? 